paint. Uh, the, the tiles there, each of those tiles. This is TNC, that's Talon and Claw. They make beautiful wooden tabletop gaming accessories, such as wood screens, dice, what manner of goods. So definitely check out Talon and Claw. They do wonderful custom work, all handmade. Next on the list is the Speechless Bard. And the Speechless Bard makes, uh, she does leather work, all handmade, hand-stitched, and painted the whole nine yards. Um, she makes beautiful products such as uh, covers for your core rule books. Um, she has a full line of dice bracelets. A very popular one is the Pride Bracelet, where each dice on the bracelet is a different color. Um, yeah, check her out. She does amazing work. Um, if you are going to order from her, give it a little bit of time because she is in the UK and it takes a little bit to clear our customs. Evidently, leather will spontaneously explode on its own. I don't know. Last on the list is the Fable Beard Company. Uh, the Fable Beard Company makes beard products such as oils, bombs. I would like to say thank you uh, to uh, Matthew Kerwin. Uh, he is a new author who just put out a uh, traveler book called The Wagner Incident. He was given permission by Mark Miller to print that book and publish it. And you can find that on Amazon on Kindle. I picked it up for $2.99 and I believe you can get it on paperback for $8.99. So definitely give it a look. All right, so I know Carrie said she was going to be a little bit late, and it is David's birthday. Corey, have you heard anything from David? He chose to work tonight. Oh, he did. On his birthday? What the fuck? That's what I said. All right, well, so no David tonight. Uh, yeah, Carrie's going to be about 10 minutes late, she said, but we will just go ahead and get started. Um... So where we left off uh, last week, um, the crew of the uh, Sindalian uh, Harrier, uh, which is actually named the Vaherg, um, that is its official name, uh, they went in and did their first pirating foray for the King of Drynax, King Oleb, and with them is famed pirate captain uh, Margaret Blaine. And she kind of told um, the travelers a little bit about how she uh, was so successful over so many years um, that basically entailed, you know, where to attack, when to attack. Um, and the key really is to not draw too much attention to yourself. If you can avoid it, don't kill anybody. Um, because... The second you start killing civilians willy-nilly and looting their cargo, then you become a threat, and that's when the authorities start to get serious about catching you. Um, so she basically uh, came along with the travelers to help them get their first prize, and that is a ship, a far trader called the Sissendai. Um, the Sissendai was actually, it's a little bit personal for Margaret, because the Sissendai was a member of, or a part of her flotilla and it is the only ship in her entire career that she lost um and she says that there is something uh on the sis and die it has smuggling compartments something that belongs to her that she wants to get back and so the uh crew of the harrier went out uh to the marduk system and sat around in the ring system of the gas giant for I believe 12 days and uh, the system die finally did uh, pop out of jump space and made a beeline for the gas giant to skim fuel and the Harrier gave chase uh, with uh, Ching Shi being an excellent pilot and uh, Rexar being an excellent gunner got a great one shot uh, he called the shot and made it, uh, he used the particle barbette to shove a lightning bolt right up their butt and took out their maneuver drive. And without any way to escape, the Sissendai radioed and surrendered. Uh, the entire crew um, is at the airlock. Uh, Ching Shi was able to successfully dock with the Sissendai, and the entire crew, except for Keith Clark is at the airlock, um, and Margaret Blaine is kind of hanging towards the back of the group, and uh, <clears throat> Keith 
Clark, make a electronics comms check, uh, EDU. Okay. And that'll be a, uh, a routine check. So it'll be six plus. Six. What'd you get? Six. Perfect. So on your communications system, you are picking up, um, so the two ships are now docked together, um, attached at the airlocks, or I guess kind of like this, because the main airlock for the Harrier is on the bottom. Um, the You are picking up a, um, a communications broadcast from your location, um, not aboard your ship, but from your location, uh, that is basically a mayday. Um, it is a signal GK that is going out, um, basically requesting assistance. Um, the system die has been attacked by pirates. They are giving a description of your ship. Um, and uh, they are requesting assistance. What do you want to do? for me to jam that signal or should I let's see I should inform the captain okay and an attempt to jam the signal okay go ahead and make an electronics comms check uh, edu and that will be a um, average eight plus So, yeah, um, let me, nope, they do not get past your, well, um, you have essentially, you know, you caught the signal, a little bit of it got out, um, but you are jamming the signal now, and, um, uh, it's all kinds of staticky and warbly, um, so, uh, Beth Smith, you get a, a message on your comms from Keith that there was a distress call that went out from the Sis and I describing your ship. So I get to know that it was jammed or it's, I mean, I've been this before or after. It's probably all right. Um, so the gas giant in Marduk is way out. Um, so even if even if this distress call were to reach Marduk, main world. Um, I mean, you're talking about probably a good 10 hours for it to reach the main world, and then, you know, probably a good six and a half to seven hours for, well, no, probably a good 10 hours on top of that for whatever response to come back. And to be real honest, it's unlikely that they're going to care. Okay. Uh, so, you guys at the door, what do you, the, the, the airlock is unlocked, um, and when you enter into the Sissendai, um, the captain of the Sissendai is this, uh, greasy little guy with long stringy hair and a patchy beard and mustache, and he says, he says with a French accent, ooh, uh, oui, oui, why have you come and, uh, pirated my vessel? We don't have any cargo for you. I don't know, maybe he's French-Canadian? I don't know. <laughs> if he says A a lot, then we'll know. <laughs> so, how famous is Margaret? Um, She's really famous. She has not boarded the Sis and Die yet. Oh, okay. Here's another question. Rexar, um, what kind of armor are you wearing? I am wearing the combat bag. Okay, so you're you're not going full uh you're not going full um no, I'm not battle going dress. Full battle dress Iron Man mode. Okay. Okay. So uh yeah, so he's like, well, we don't have any cargo that you may be interested in, eh? Well, I was saying that Margaret used to, cap used to captain the ship and um, has something in a secret compartment.
environment that you want as your tree? Um, make your choice either a persuasion or intimidation check. starts to laugh and he goes ha oh, ha you you are funny you must be a new new uh, pirate to this whole game everybody knows that that uh, the, the late great margaret blaine has, has she has retired from the pirating business well that's true but she's on her way here so you'll see pretty yourself soon enough. So she comes walking in behind you, and you can see that Margaret Blaine has put on a long black leather duster, and she is carrying a uh, um, a completely tricked out advanced combat rifle. Um, it's had it's had some major work done to it, and she is smoking a cigar. <laughs> And she comes in and she she looks at the captain. And she says, "Hello, Jacques. Uh, I I love what you've done with my ship." And Jacques turns three shades of pale and says, "Oh, Captain Blaine, I uh, I things were were different back then. I had to run and take this this and that." She says, "I don't care." She says, "I want you to unlock your cargo hold." and let us in right now. He says, uh, I, I would do that, but the uh, the chief engineer you see, he's gone into the cargo hold and locked himself inside. Uh, he's changed the code. I, I don't know how to get the door open. I'm not good with all of that computer junk mumbly jumbo. At this point, I hold up my hand. Oh, don't worry. I'm really good at hacking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Margaret should know where the cargo hold is. How many people are in here that we need to keep an eye on? Like this room. So the crew of the Sis and I, uh, there is the captain who also acts as the pilot of the Sis and I. And if you scroll all the, right, all the way to the right, um, you can see. So um, the layout of the Sis and I, you came in here at three. Okay. And it's just a quick hang uh, or through this door here and hang to the left, and this door is locked shut. Um, there is the captain. Um, he tells you that on the bridge is a is his uh, sensor operator and co-pilot, and then there is an engineer who has locked himself in the cargo hold. Okay. There's Ching Shi. So Ching Shi, I remember before we uh, logged off last week, Ching Shi was bringing a breaching gun. Yes. So the breaching gun is a fancy little device. It's basically a um, uh, rotary barrel shotgun that fires sticky grenades. And full at full auto, and so you can go, you know, cross stitch a door, and then hit a button on it, and those charges all explode and blow the door in. So there, that's an option. Uh, you know, if Rexar doesn't want to break a sweat with his uh, axe. Okay. Do you want to give the gun a shot? And this is, since doors don't move, unless they're opening, um, I'm going to say that this is an easy task. So you okay. only have to get a four plus on gun combat. Um, hold on, let me see exactly what kind of gun combat that. I think it's just gun combat slug, but it might be heavy weapon, so hold on. Here. That gun. Oh wait, no, I was in the right book already. Derp. 
getting my books mixed up. I'm sorry, not the boarding gun, the breaching gun. Breaching yeah. gun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, I have a boarding gun too, but right. I'm doing the breaching gun. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say that it's just going to use a gun combat slug because um, this, this drum, I mean, doesn't necessarily have to have grenades in it. I mean, you could put... 12 gauge shotgun shells in this thing if you wanted. I don't know why you would do that. Um, I mean, if you wanted to really fuck shit up in like a six foot range, you know, right. it'd be great, but everything within six meters of you is going to be dead. Everything beyond that is going to be kind of pissed off. Right. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> I will say that, uh, like I said, it is easy. You just need to get a four plus gun combat slug uh, plus dexterity. Okay. Thank you. Lord, that's lucky because I have plus two for guns, but a little terribly, so I got a five. Yay. So you got a five. That that definitely gets her done. And you watch Ching Shi uh, wield this this uh, breaching gun and she stitches an X across the cargo bay airlock door, or iris door, um, and so I assume you want to take some cover before blowing this thing. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, uh, Ching Shi, go ahead and roll your damage for the breaching gun. cannot uh, handle that and a large hole is blown and torn through the middle of the iris valve. Um, being a terrible shot, the engineer takes a shot with an auto pistol and a round ricochets off the edge of the door. What would you guys like to do? Okay. We're we all took cover, and then when yeah. we emerged, now took a shot. Yeah, you heard the engineer. You guys are in this hallway here, probably around the corner here where two is. And <laughs> this guy is ducking behind something. Um, it, the lights are off in there. It is dark. And he calls out, and he says, uh, You're not authorized to come in here. Actually, I think, actually, yes. If I remember correctly, Aslan <coughs> have a. Yeah, you're enhanced senses. So with your Aslan enhanced senses, you can see better than most in there. You can see that this this guy is ducked down and hiding behind what looks like a um, a low berth. That is plugged into a portable generator. Uh, I would like to walk into the room, turn on my grab shield so it lights up the area around me so we can see it pretty clearly. Okay. Pull out my axe and go. Listen, I don't want to have to review it half, but I will if I have to. So just please put down the gun. Make an intimidation check. I'm just going to ask him if he could be mad and what fight. <laughs> That's an eight. Okay, well, he only got a five, and so he sees an Aslan and 
basically pisses his pants and he <laughs> sets the gun down and, and you can hear him and he stands up and he's like oh I didn't know you were Aslan pirates there's a good lad and I walk up and I pat him on the back and pick up his pistol okay as you, you walk up to him and you pat him on the back you see that there is a uh, a Indeed, he was hiding behind a low berth, and there is somebody in the low berth. Now, what a low berth is, <clears throat> for people that uh, can't really afford too much, they can um, they can pay for passage via low berth on a ship um, where they are put into cryogenic suspension. Now, <clears throat> when this is done, the crew um, all takes bets, and there is a betting pool on which one of them are going to die. Because in order to come out of uh, out of low birth, that you have a medicine check has to be made, um, and uh, sometimes people cack it, and whoever gets the right answer um, wins the pool. And if nobody wins the pool, or if nobody dies, then the captain collects it all. <laughs> so, uh, but. This, knowing what you know about far traders, this low berth is not where it's supposed to be. This is in the cargo hold. It is plugged into a portable generator, so it was taken from another ship. And there is a registry on the side of the low berth that says Lucky Lady. All right. And, that. and there is somebody inside, frozen. <laughs> Maybe the beeline for. Where's the treasure? Where is, or the sentimental item? I just, I'm personally not super interested in that. But anybody wants to ask questions about it, feel free. So, Margaret walks in. She goes over to a floor panel uh, over towards here. She lifts up the floor panel and pulls out a, what looks like a leather bag. And uh, it, you can tell that there, it looks like there is a book inside the leather bag. She picks it up and she says, the rest of the cargo is yours. You can take whatever you want. And she walks out of the cargo hold and goes back to the Harrier. Okay. So what is in here, aside from the frozen popsicle in the low berth, is there is eight tons of cargo in Of that, go ahead and make an investigation check. Everybody, or, or whoever wants to be start opening cargo containers. Okay. <laughs> I rolled terribly. So, it's just one dice, right? Two. Uh, oh, I take it back. I take it back. So, uh, oh, six. So, Chin Shi, the first crate that you open up, you open up a. Now, these are cargo containers like you would like you would see um, down at the freight yard. These are big. You know, people buy them to bury them in their backyard and go crazy and build a nuclear shelter. That kind of cargo container. Um, in the one that you open up, you find it is filled with exotic goods. Um, it looks like this 
This is a container that's probably meant for or was meant for a uh, high-end market. You find uh, alien relics. Um, you're not sure what you're looking at, but they're very old technological devices. You find um, some <clears throat> cages with uh, mummified uh, unique animals in them. Um, this cargo container is worth a lot of money, potentially. Uh, Beth Smith, what did you get? <laughs> you find a cargo container full of uh, uranium and plutonium. Mm, and uh, Rexar, what did you get? Uh, three. You open up a container full of illegal weapons. I like this one. Military grade, uh, either heavy weapons or um, you know personal weapons. Heavy weapons such as grenade launchers, rocket launchers. No FGMPs or PGMPs or anything like that. Um, there is a crate of. This. There's a crate of. Um, um, advanced combat rifles, some submachine guns, um, semi-automatic pistols, all of these have the Imperial Sunburst on the, on the crates. And, in addition to that, there is a crate, uh, a large crate on the left side of the cargo container that it has the Sunburst on the side of it, and it is filled with missiles and sandcaster barrels. Uh, I start dragging those two crates. <laughs> oh, okay, well, Captain. Hold on. Have fun. I'll take the to ship to inspect. Thank you. Now, the... The, uh... The system die has a cargo loader to help you transfer this cargo um, over to the uh, Harrier. Um... Once you unload all of that cargo, what are you going to do with the with the low berth? There is somebody in the low berth. What would be the benefit of taking it? Like, you know, how do we find anything out about this lady? Well, so far, the cargo that you're finding in this cargo hold, aside from the, from possibly, I mean, nothing in here looks Correct. The exotics, he, the captain of the assistant die might have picked that up while doing some speculative trading. It doesn't look like that's likely the case. It looks like the citizen die has uh, been involved not only in smuggling, which you knew, but it looks like they've also picked up some pirated cargo. And this, whoever this person is inside this, Whoever they got it from, they likely pirated it from a sh from another ship. Um, they could be held for ransom. You don't know. All right, I'm going to decide to take this NPC with us. Okay, are you thawing them out, or are you just moving? I'm moving them to our ship, and then probably going to thaw them out. Okay, so you guys get to your ship, um, and. As you get onto the bridge, Margaret uh, Blake tells uh, tells you, um, set course for Marduk, Maine. Uh, we will dock at the high port. I know just such a person that can offload this cargo for you. Excellent. Uh, Ching Shi. Like offloading the guns. Well, it, they would be worth a lot of money. You can take... Basically, you guys can take what you want and sell the rest. Um, Ching, or yeah, Ching Shi, make an astrogation plus EDU check. Okay. Eleven. Perfect. 
And then go ahead and make a, um, that will be a routine piloting plus dexterity check. Okay. Fourteen. Oh, awesome. So, Ching Shi makes this look easy, undocks from the Sisandai, turns and heads towards the, uh, heads directly for the main world. Um, it will take you six and a half, oh, I'm sorry, it will take you ten hours to get here. Um, I mean, you could go at full thrust if you wanted to um, and cut that down to like six and a half hours. It's up to you. Hey, what do you think, Captain? How long does it take to thaw out a meat popsicle? How many hours? Uh, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, but it will require you to make a medicine check. Hold on here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Well, hold on, and I will tell you exactly what this entails. It might be worth. It, I, well, can can the meat popsicles face be seen? Like, is there a handy window that she throws in and you can see her face? Yes, you see a dark-skinned woman, um, quite muscularly built, and there is a um, a storage locker that's attached to the side of the um, of the cryo unit. Um, and inside the storage locker, um, you see some fairly mundane clothes, some minor armor, and a well, well used uh, laser pistol in a well worn leather holster. Okay. So, like, probably uh, a common paper laser and so the lines be done, and we talk to the person. Okay. But we were, we were trying to decide if Ching Shi should um, go fast and make it six hours or like go the speed limit. <laughs> right? Go the speed limit. Well, I mean, if, yeah. you're, if you're hauling ass trying to get to, um, to get to the main world, if you're, you're you could put... Ship, or are they weapons that we would carry? They're weapons that you would carry. Oh, oh so they aren't ship missiles. No, but they're illegal weapons, and sure they're awesome. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, I have a gas pistol, a breaching gun, and a boarding gun, so... For your in, your endurance. So, Alyssa, what's your endurance? Under characteristics. Oh, okay. 
Hold on just a second. She's having a technical difficulty. Okay. So, your what is your endurance DM? Uh, plus one. Plus one. Okay. So hold on while uh, Beth Smith comes back. She that is a plus. That will be a plus one to her medic check. Actually, it makes it a plus two to the medic check because uh, your guys' ship is TL fifteen. So this is what Margaret Blaine looked like when she walked onto the Sis and Die. <clears throat> She's kind of a in her sixties old badass. <clears throat> so Beth Smith, make a medic a check plus EDU, and you get an additional plus two to that. And you're wanting to be an average. So eight plus. Thirteen. Nice. So you open up this uh, this low berth, and you have thawed out Raquel Raff Moore. Um, Raquel was traveling to the Trojan Reef. She had heard a rumor that the king, that King Oleb of Drynax was hiring travelers for some great endeavor and the pay was going to be enormous and so she hired on to come out here and she is actually a member of a trade ship in the sword world's confederation area um known the ship is the s bendersmith um not that you guys would probably have heard of her but um raf is a um Well, I'll, I'll let Raf describe herself. Oh. Raf's hard to describe. <laughs> Raf is a kind of an Amazonian style built woman. She has a very high, high top, uh, butch haircut. She is herself. Well, 
And she's really good streetwise. She can get connections anywhere she goes fairly easily. That is something through really really needs. And so you Raf, you're filled in um, basically what the deal is that these guys signed on to do. Um, they were loaned the ship, um, which the description of the ship, it looks like you are in a Baroque steampunk style vessel. Everything is rolled velvet or rolled leather. There's a lot of brass fixtures. Everything either has a crystal knob or button on it, or it looks like it should. In a lot of places, especially um, where you are thawed out, there, um, there are obviously parts missing. This ship is uh, about a thousand years old, so um, it has some damage. Uh, but this is what they were loaned. It's a, it is fast. The jump drive is now completely uh, repaired, so it is fairly reliable as far as jumping goes. Um, yeah, compared to what you're used to, this thing will do six Gs of thrust. The ship that you came from only does one. <laughs> so, so the the Harrier gets right up on it. It is a uh, it is the Harrier class. It was specifically designed to be a commerce raider, so it, it's pretty good at being a pirate. Um, and the deal was, if these guys take the commerce raider out to the Harrier, they will and go pirate. Um, whatever that they loot. 10% comes off the top and goes to the Kingdom of Drynax. The rest is for you guys to keep. Um, it is up to you to repair the Harrier, of course. Um, but it should also be recognized that you should spread money around as you're making contacts because it's not it's not enough to just disrupt commerce. Um, the Kingdom of Drynax wants you to get other planets under the fold so to speak. So some of it, you may be required to do some diplomatic type stuff. And should this all work out, they have a they have a uh, writ of mark, meaning that it shows on there, it is signed off by the King of Drynax that you are privateers for the Kingdom of Drynax and not just pirates. Um, of course, nobody's going to recognize that because King, Kingdom of Drynax is a nobody and nobody cares yet. Um, so you know you'll you'll want to keep that safe for now, and uh, should you should the kingdom of Drynax uh, turn into the new Sindalian Empire, which is the goal, um, you will all be given titles and land um, and potentially riches beyond your wildest dreams, in addition to whatever it is that you pirate. So, um, I welcome Raph to the crew. Yeah, so it's gonna be easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after your six and a half hour or ten hours of uh, heading towards uh, Marduk, did I put a? Yeah, here is a picture of Marduk. You come up on the main world of Marduk. Uh, Marduk is according to your sensor logs marduk is listed as being um fairly earth-like um from what you see from orbit it's it, it, it would not really be classified so much as a garden world uh like earth would but um you can tell that it has vast seas and um uh, Marduk is listed. The st there is a high port and there is a down port. Um, nobody except for special people has access to automatically land at the down or at the down port on the planet itself. And so, um, as you come into range, you hear on the comms uh, communication from the high port requesting identification and uh, what your intentions are. <laughs> well, I guess I guess the real question is which uh, transponder are you, <laughs> are you um, flying? So you've got 
the uh, Sindalian Star Guard identifying you as the Vaherg. You've got the blank transponder, which identifies you as pirates. And then you have a transponder that identifies you as a trade ship uh, called the Kirkendall. Do I know about Marduk? Like, is, is the choice obvious, or do I need to? Is it really like a thing I have to think about? Uh, since you were in the scout service, make a, a history check or in, make an intellect check, uh, but you get a boon dice. So roll three d six and take the two highest dice. Yes. Uh, that. I think it'd be eight. When the Empire went batshit um, to get hit with uh, nuclear weaponry, uh, um, the cities were shattered, um, and you know that Marduk is now considered just a backwater nowhere, um, that the General Development Corporation, uh, Jadeco, uh, has actually built the high port and the down port on the planet. And at one point, they tried to put it up for sale, and nobody wanted it because there's there is nothing on Marduk. Um, so Jadeco is running it uh, as it is. Um, the planet itself is not on any major trade route. They do receive the occasional large bulk uh, freighter, but that's about it. Um, you know that the high port is fairly lean as far as. Um, entertainment goes it has the usual number of shops and whatnot but the real uh the real entertainment for crews wanting shore leave is on the down port okay so my options were pirate um you could and then what was the other one uh sandalian star guard So, so if we go with the Sindelian Star Guard, then we're uh, basically we arrive. Back. Well, if you not necessarily if if you if you decide to display, it depends on what your intentions are. Um, if if you're putting out the Sindelian Star Guard, you're definitely going to draw attention to yourself. Um, but if you wanted to try and talk to somebody who's in charge and try to get Marduk under Dryanax's good favors, um, that maybe that's what you want to do. If you want to try to sell your illegal loot not drawing any attention to yourself, you'll definitely want to go with the traitor transponder called the Kirkendall. Yeah, let's go with traitor then. We can recruit them to the Empire, the new Empire later. Okay. When we get there. So, really quick, uh, because it's a smuggling ship, I assume there are whole So, can, can we make sure that the most uh, contrabanding things we're carrying are in the most discreet or hidden holds? So, the hold of uh, the Harrier isn't really designed to be a smuggling ship. This is a commerce raider. Um, however, <coughs> the... <coughs> no, yeah, no, not yet. Yeah, I mean, that is something that you can add, and I would, I always highly recommend that. Uh, but I can tell you the cargo hold of the Harrier is a frustration waiting to happen because the the cargo hold is kind of sectioned off with uh, like like a cubicle office and every wall has a uh, a mural on it with pictures of Sindalian emperors and it's like all these subdivisions in the cargo hold and all of these murals just get in your way. And the second problem is that the cargo hold has a really low ceiling. So it is it is a bit frustrating. I'm just thinking if if we get if someone wants to board and like inspect how are what's the best, most discreet way we can we can store our newly found mass of weapons and exotic I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to hide the exotic goods under my mask in my cabin. <laughs> not, okay. from, not from my crew. My crew knows it's there. I'm not. I'm not trying to take anything. I'm just hiding it so that oh. if we get searched, no one takes it. 
So. So Raph politely asks for her uh, laser pistol back. Oh, of course, of course. Here you go. Welcome to the crew. Um, so to tell you, You could all take an advanced combat rifle. Uh, the ultimate evolution of conventional firearm, advanced combat rifles are the weapon of choice for many military units. Standard equipment includes an electronic battlefield sight, incorporating both light amplification and passive IR, visual magnification, and a laser rangefinder, which may also be used as a targeting or target painting device. The weapon is also gyroscopically stabilized during firing. A sling is provided and the muzzle of the rifle includes an integrated flash suppressor and adapter for launching a 40 millimeter ram shoot through grenade. So, would you all like to take one of those? I will. Yeah. So, I'm it's TL is 10. Range is 450. Damage is 3D. Uh, kilograms are 3. Magazine is 40. Uh, magazine cost is 15. And traits are Auto 3 and Scope. Let's see here. There are. And what was that called, Chris? Advanced Combat Rifle. Advanced Combat Rifle. Got it. There are. There are enough assault pistols for you to each take one. Uh, it is an auto pistol designed to fire bursts of or fully automatic fire. Assault pistols are notoriously inaccurate and suffer DM-2 to all attack rolls when using burst or full auto modes. Uh, travelers are advised to carry as many extra magazines as they can as the assault pistol burns ammunition very quickly. Okay. Okay. I'm going to. There are. Let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So then. <laughs> uh, there we go. There are enough. There are there are six grenade launchers. Uh, grenade launchers are used to fire grenades over long distances. They may be equipped with any other type or with any type of grenade. Um, in addition to the grenade launchers, there are um, a case of where the fuck are the grenades? There you go, grenades. Interesting. Okay. 
There we go. Grenades. Um, <clears throat> there are a there's a case of a hundred uh, fragmentation grenades. So does anybody want a grenade launcher? Let's see. Since my board or breaching gun is essentially a grenade launcher, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I also have a breaching gun, I feel like that's good enough. Where did Rexar go? He went away. Okay. Uh, well, we will come back to Rexar. He's off, he's off pillaging grenades. Yes, he's well, drilling on grenades. He's just like stuffing grenades down his pants. <laughs> so, in addition to those weapons, um, and there's, like I said, there's enough here for you to sell as, as well, even if you all take some stuff. Um, there is a crate of uh, ship missiles. Overtake, we're keeping those. Yeah, especially since you have a missile launcher. Yeah. Kitty pants. Uh, let's see here. Weapons. Tell you exactly what kind of missiles those are. Sign them out, spare bets. Keeping shit missiles. Raph is going to. These are advanced missiles. Uh, let's see here. These do 5D damage on a starship scale. Okay. How many are there? Uh, there are 41 missiles. And you said what damage? Uh, 5D. Okay. These are considered smart. Um, so they do lock on. Let's see here. Where is smart? They have thrust of 15. And they give you a plus two to hit. Because they are smart. Oh, that's fine. Con. It's basically for delivering a non lethal uh, attack with a grenade launcher. So basically, it's a baseball that you <laughs> load into the grenade launcher and knock at somebody. It's a t shirt cannon. Yes. Yes. Beanbag rounds. Okay, so I'll set that right there. Um you so you're declaring that you are the traitor Kirkendall. Um and the the uh, port authority comes back and it says, Kirkendall, you are clear to dock. Ching Shi, make a routine piloting check plus dexterity. Fourteen. Fifteen. Nice. So yeah, Ching Shi swings the 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 Harrier around and backs the cargo bay right up to the docking point and new problem. Uh, Rexar, did you want a grenade launcher? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was, my grandma went home and I was honor bound to go answer that. No problem. Okay, so, uh, go ahead and write down, these are the specs for a grenade launcher. It is TL7, 
range 100. Uh, damage in this case for frag grenade is. Did I say? What did I say? It is, they are fragmentation grenades. Damage is 5D. Um, blast 9 for traits. Uh, nine is how many uh, hexes out the the blast radius is. So it goes out nine. Well, let's see. I just brain fired. What's nine times six? Um, to your. They're pretty <laughs> Into one of the um, hard points. I think you've got four more. Left shoulder. Oh, Sorry. well, like, yeah, yeah, you. Half of this back of paper is just stuff. Right for the battle. Yeah, the battle dress is is quite um, intricate. But yeah, you you should have enough room for to put the grenade launcher in there. So as far as Raph's wage, um, I mean, you're a part of the crew, so you get a share. Yeah, I thought you were playing everything evenly. Pretty much. That's, yep. Yeah. So the harder you work, the more you get. And the thing to keep in mind, too, is that most uh, pirate ships are uh, weird in that, yes, they have a captain, but they are a democracy. I'll just tone down the boss and get some <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to vote for me just in case. Um, so, yeah. You get, you guys dock. ching -Chi brings in the ship. Um, and when you come out onto the high port, uh, the first thing that you see is a customs office. And the customs office, uh, to your surprise, um, Captain Margaret Blaine walks up to the customs officer and says something uh, quietly to him and slips him a uh, bar of uh, a mega credit and you're just waved through. There's no inspection. And she tells you that she is going to introduce you uh, to her contact here. Um, she tells you that his name is Rafe Zantuli. She says Rafe uh, normally doesn't uh, directly work with um, what she calls merchandise. She says he's actually more of an information broker, but he owes me a favor or two, and uh, I think we can get him to set you up with a way to um, sell your, your cargo. Uh, and when you walk into, you walk into a small office, um, that is labeled as, um, Xerix, uh, consumables, and it looks like there's just a counter and nobody is standing at the counter. And so Margaret Blaine walks up and rings a bell on the counter and this gentleman comes out to greet you. He says, oh, Margaret, uh, I didn't expect to see you. And she says, uh, Rafe, I got, uh, I want to call in that favor. And he says, of course you do. What, what do you, you need from me? And she, she says, well, we have some cargo. And she hands him a data sheet uh, with what she wrote down. And he looks it over and he says, um, 
Well, you you know I I don't deal in hard merchandise. And she says, uh, I have a feeling that you're going to have a wonderful relationship with this crew in the near future. So do this one favor for me. And so he kind of quickly adds some stuff up on his portable computer. And he says, um, after costs, I can give you $1.5 million for it. What do you guys say? Does any of you have the broker skill? She has a very good poker face and just turns and looks at you guys and, and like, you know, it's up to you. Uh, I would like to spend a side point. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. What What do you want to uh, What do you want to do? So, I'm honestly I'm more interested in what Margaret's thinking than the broker personally. Okay. Um, So, yeah. Carrie, um, in your core rulebook, if you turn to page 198. Okay. Me? Okay, well, I don't get it. Yep. So, while we're waiting for to come back with her book. Rafe, you uh, get a personal communications call um, and it goes pretty much to voicemail. But the message is uh, that a that your your you and your crew's um, skills are uh, wanted by the Jadeco uh, Mardek spaceport administrator and he apologizes that he, he realizes that you are on the high port and that he apologizes that he can't meet you he is at the down port uh currently uh conducting business that he can't get away from uh but you could schedule a um a shuttle to come down to the down port and meet with him um should you want to take him up on his business offer So, Carrie, um, so as a Scion, um, I can tell you pretty much you'll want to keep your core rulebook open to the Scionic section. Um, so, so what you're describing sounds like read surface thoughts to me. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So you would have to spend two side points. Yes. And you need to make an average check. Yep, I'm going to do that. So 2d6 plus your Psy DM. Okay, 2d6. And I will say, I will say you can add your intellect DM to that as well, since it's... piece of information that you glean from your read surface thoughts is that Margaret is thinking 
uh, Wraith was wise to take her take her up on this offer since his name is in the book that she just got off the sis and die um, you learned that that the book in the leather bag that she obtained is a book of names and blackmail material on each name in there okay um, Mar that is Margaret's book. That's the personal items that she wanted to uh, get from the ship and we could have everything else. Correct. Interesting. The other piece of information that you get from it is she's thinking, she's like, well, 1.5 million is pretty good, but I think these guys could get more. Okay. My question is, does Raph have a uh, broker skill or persuade? Neither. Oh. Neither. I have, I have persuade at zero. Does Raph have diplomat? Uh, I have persuade at one. Yeah. Okay, maybe I can make a roll then. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's not. She's good at street wise, so she can go out and if you guys want to buy drugs or find out who's pimping them hoes, she can go out on the street and find all that information out for you. Okay. I think she also has good investigation because she was a cop for a while. Okay, cool. That was an Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make a first rule. Okay. Yeah, you got it. So he says, all right. Really? He says, um, <laughs> yep, yeah, she can find a fence, get dirt on people. Yeah. So he says, all right, I can go as high as two million credits. Two mega credits. All right, let's take on that. That sounds like a deal. Okay. Um, and so he transfers over two million credits to you. Uh, let's see here. How many people do I have to divide it between? Well, hold on here. Two. So 200,000 200, credits of that would go to King Oleb automatically off the top. Yeah. 1.8, so that's 300,000 apiece. There you go. Thank you. You guys Thank just you made a, a quick 300,000 credits each. That's that's um, not bad for a day's work. I knew teaching fourth grade would come in handy. Right? <laughs> yeah, my brain's fried on doing math today. I don't know what my problem is. Well, if you need to learn a song about Lock Division, I can teach you. So, here's a funny fact about me. Um, after having done so much computer programming and whatnot, I can no longer do long or short division by hand on paper. I just can't do it. I can do it in my head, but I can't. I can't. I couldn't even begin to write it out and tell you how. Because I'm so used to just going, oh, well, I'll just grab a, an object for that and put it into the program. So, I, I'm just not capable of doing it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, my brain won't let me do stuff that, like, I know some play that he can be way better at. It's 
which is so hard to learn. Like, I'm like, what's the point in right here? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> good for me. And then I do all the other stuff. It's so pretty good. <laughs> Where do we go now? We, we had a successful pirate mission. That was pretty great. So do you guys want to put some into a ship fund? I mean, if you all if you all took two hundred thousand each, that's six hundred thousand that could go into a general fund. Right. And then. still all coming out with 200,000 credits on top, so that's yeah. pretty good. Is everybody in agreement with the plan? Yeah. Uh, I agree. Okay, cool. Um, I think we should do that. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, he's probably going to have like five credits left over from his space drug debt. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He does have a, a huge amount of debt from drugs. Um, he's actually much older than he looks. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, where did that? Where, where did that be? So <clears throat> around uh, around the high port, uh, you guys see signs that look like this. And as far as the the Marduk Highport Defense Squad, um, you know that they are that the Defense Squad is actually um, essentially a bunch of really old, beat up uh, system defense ships. Um, but Raf got this, this voicemail from the administrator, the Starport administrator, saying that he was down on the planet, wanted to hire you guys to do a job. He feels he knows so. He, in a part of this message, he says he got his, he got your names um, from the administrator of uh, Calixqual on Chachi Walidique, and uh, you came highly recommended, and he thinks that you would do well to come down, uh, meet him at the downport, and he says to just take a orbital shuttle, and you see this sign. Um, advertising the orbital shuttles going down to the surface. Well, let's vote. I want to go. I could use leave. Yeah, let's go. That adventure is out there. Okay. So a ticket on the uh, shuttle will cost you each 50 credits. Oh no, you're broke. <laughs> Sweet. And despite the look of the um, the look of the Marduk orbital defense force, the shuttle doesn't look too bad. Um, the rear section, uh, so uh, number four, the cargo hold. Anybody that's carrying any cargo, and of course the engineering section, that is locked off. There is a small common area that that has a couple of vending machines, um, and then of course you have seats in the uh, accelerator benches in the uh, uh, passenger section. The bridge is locked off, so you can't go into the bridge or into the cargo hold. And the um, shuttle launches. <laughs> Sorry, but the name of the seats. You notice that there are some other passengers 
aboard the shuttle. So yeah. it would be big enough that you can just like man spread and everyone will get out of your way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Do you subway. So you'll Sorry. <laughs> Probably helps if I grab the correct book. Luke's character Hannibal has a spray bottle designed for Rexar's shenanigans specifically. If we're, if we're just like gonna um, end up having to spend time um, sitting around on the shuttle, me and uh, Ching Chi should probably explain how we were like hailed as heroes for saving a bunch of people. Oh, yeah. For repairing, like. Even though, yeah. even though the cat basically threatened to kill us all under the pressure of the of uh-huh. Walker by blowing up the. Yeah. I used the but anyway, everyone thinks we're heroes, and that's why we come highly recommended. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty much what happened there. So the first passenger that you see on the shuttle is this gentleman. He is a Varger. Um, so and you you learn that his name is uh, Evan Garharsvin Sanderson. And he is a, um, he's very well dressed. Um, I mean, it's not like he's wearing a super expensive suit, but it is very well put together. Um, you can tell that he is a man of means, um, and he has some business to conduct uh, down on, um, on the surface. He's very well spoken. Um, and very qual- very calm and kind of quiet. Um, the next person that you meet is Finan Trevix. Finan um, seems like he is a little bit anxious. He's a little bit nervous. Every time the shuttle hits a little bit of turbulence, you can hear him be like, Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, whew. And, it, like, this goes on constantly. And he seems like he is where He's a little bit disheveled. Uh, it looks like he's wearing a third-hand uh, suit jacket and a uh, dress shirt and a, a, a out-of-style tie. from a, the, the tie's out of style from about 20 years. But um, he just seems very anxious about everything. And the last person that you meet is Karine Lukawiak, and she is this young lady. Um, you learn that she actually uh, was born uh, on Marduk, um, but she grew up around the starport. Um, she she tells you that she's actually um, quite civilized and normal. Um, she's not one like one of the any of the island folk. Okay. Or down Starport no. <laughs> so these people just happen to be in the shuttle, both of you? Yep, they're they're riding with you. They are fellow passengers. Everybody make everybody make a recon plus intellect check. Well, you had to say plus intellect. Never mind. I got um eleven. Okay. I got nine. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, not paying attention. Raph got a twelve. So it's recon plus. You said intellect. Yes. Ten. Nice. Ten. So you all made it. So you're on it. So, uh, uh, Raph, you you are on a orbital shuttle leaving the high port, going down to the down port 
to meet with the starport administrator. And you all are sitting there, you know, eating your packaged peanuts, uh, listening to Finan uh, complain every time there's a little bit of turbulence. And about two hours out from the high port, you're just starting to get to the um, edge of the planet when you are looking out the window and you see a series of flashes of ships coming in very close to the high port that are exiting jump. These ships are very ragtag. Um, you can see that they have um, what looks like uh, markings where somebody has attempted to paint logos on the side of the ship and Raph, you realize that it looks like they're painted with blood. There are spikes welded to the body of the ship. Um, these are raiders. And they immediately attack. They are attacking the high port and they attack and they hit the shuttle. Um, the shuttle loses its engines and is going down. Okay. Everybody make an average. You, you need to make an average athletics dexterity check. Uh, So, Rexar, what did you get? 11. Okay. And Raph, what did you get? Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. What about Keith Clark and Beth Smith? So, I, I got a 7 and a Keith. And I got a 9. Okay. So, Keith Clark and Raph are, as the shuttle tries to take evasive maneuvers and uh, is going down, Ralph and Keith Clark are thrown around the cabin and take two points of endurance damage each. And Ralph and Keith Clark, you can make another dexterity check. To grab onto something and secure yourselves. I think that's one of them, shouldn't they fail? Yeah. yeah that's, a that's a possibility, yes. So, Keith Clark, what did you get? Six. Okay. Uh, you are struggling. Uh, so, Rexar, which one do you want to grab? Do you want to grab Raph or do you want to grab Keith Clark? Who has more endurance? I'm sure Graf. Oh. Um, I, I have eight. Okay. Graf says... So after her first hit, she's down to ten. <laughs> I'll grab Keith Clark then, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, go ahead, so Rexar, go ahead and make a dexter athletics dexterity check. Uh, that is a nine. Nice. You grab Raph and sit him into a uh, acceleration couch and buckle him in. Raph, you take another one point of damage. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, you grab, sorry, you grab Keith and strap him into the chair. Raph, you take another one point of damage. Okay. This is rough. So wait, our ship is up there, isn't it? And we'll rate it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so oh. this is what your, your ship currently looks like. <laughs> um... Wait, at least we unloaded the cargo. Ching, she, you're banging on the shuttle uh, bridge cockpit door uh, to no answer. Um, over the intercom, you hear 
that you need to strap in. Um, the shuttle is going in for a rough landing. Okay. Um, uh, I really want to open that door and see if I can help, like, uh, land the shuttle. But, no, with your legs. I think we tell them to. So, yeah, the, the message. Oh, that's true. So, that's what? True. I a message. So, what do you want to do? I want to, I want to, well, hold on, hold on. say starport is under attack uh, many ships uh, they they look like they're augman raiders strap in we're going to try and get down safe strap in now missile alert and the ship suddenly lurches violently and then hits the ground okay well it was a great campaign you guys <laughs> <laughs> hey at least it wasn't your ship <laughs> Could you call a ship down? I have, a, I have something I want to put on for these races. So. <laughs> yeah, did you bring your weapon of mass destruction belt or whatever it is? Uh, it's like a power armor suit. Yeah. No, I'm still probably wearing the combat thing. I thought this was a safe planet. Yeah. When you come to, you find, you find that the entire front section of the ship basically hit the ground. And the two pilots in the cockpit are quite dead. Yeah, that's what she'll let me in. Everybody else uh, survived in the passenger section. Um, taking stock, you find that there is a survival kit. Uh, let's see here. Did I put this in? All right, guys. This is the survival kit that is available in the shuttle. Yeah, you could do that. Um, okay, that's it. Everybody make a Recon intellect check. So, Rexar, you got an 8? 9. 9. Raph got a 10. What did Ching Shi get? Uh, I think I got a 9. Okay. What about Keith Clark? 4. Oof. And okay. Beth Smith? 6. Okay. So, Raph, Ching Shi, and Rexar, um, as uh, Beth Smith and Keith Clark are going over the survival kit that's in the shuttle, you look up, and you can see high up in the clouds, kind of circling over your crash site, uh, but it's way up there. 
uh, what looks like the underside of a Type R subsidized merchant, uh, one of the raiders, is circling above overhead. They're above 100 range. Uh, what, uh, what's her name? Um, her name is... I like her name, boss. I know, I have it. I, have, I just happen to have an advanced combat rifle with a range of... <laughs> <laughs> what Kareen tells you is that, um, she says, uh, that the Augment Raiders, I mean, there's not a whole lot here, but the Augment Raiders are known for stealing tech and uh, any salvage that they could get from this shuttle would be worth it for them. They're also known for kidnapping people that have technical know-how. Um, she says we. Sh she says that um, we should bury the pilot and co-pilot um, and then get as far away from the wreck as possible. The <clears throat> Finan is like, are you kidding me? We don't have time to bury them. We have to go now. We have to we have to get away from there, or get away from this wreckage, and, and, you know, away from the raiders. And Evan Sanderson, the Vargur, says, I, I concur. We should probably get to cover as soon as possible. I'm sure that a rescue mission will be sent out. All of your personal comms, you are too far away. So your personal comms usually would uh, use the ship to relay your signal. The communications on the shuttle are FUBAR at this point, and so you cannot, you're not in contact with anybody. You're getting nothing but static. So what would you like to do here? So they're going to come raid the shuttle. Um, should we just let them do it, or should we try and do There's something? no honor in running. There's glory to be won, my friends. Raph, do you want to do you want to tell them how big the cargo hold on a subsidized merchant is? <laughs> since since you were a crew member of one, you might let them in on how many people could spill out of the cargo bay of a subsidized merchant. Yeah. That's it, okay. Oh. Uh, so, Raph tells you that a subsidized merchant's cargo hold is big enough that a free trader could actually, if it could fit through the cargo bay doors, would have enough room to land inside and, and travel along. There could be hundreds of raiders inside this subsidized merchant. Oh, there's no glory and pointless death. <laughs> although, although we need a ride back up to our ship. Well, and... Maybe this is the ship to take us there. So, Kareen kind of... Well, if we need to bring something to explode when they come to raid the ship, this is kind of a fuck you for them shooting us down. You so, could do that. Uh, I um, think we should have been... not hang on somebody's wall. do you want to use for a booby trap? How many what? How many grenades do you want to use? Three. Wow. Three of my six. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will reimburse you later. Does, no, it's fine. I was just impressed with how many you really need. <laughs> does anybody have the explosive skill? 
kind of thought Rexar would have explosives. I have one explosives. There you go. Rexar, make a explosives plus EDU check. And it will oh, be a, it will be an average. Uh, it's average, right? Correct. Oh, thank God. All right, all right. Okay, so Rexar quickly is, is working to set up a booby trap with these grenades and hide them as best he can. Do you guys want to take the time to bury the two pilots, or do you want to just get out of here and get to cover? I will grab the bodies so we can bury them later. Okay. All right. I have to figure I can put one on each shoulder and just pump it. Okay. Yeah, you. You throw these bodies over your shoulder and you take off running. Um, now, where you landed is on the coastline. Um, it is kind of like the Oregon coast in the fall. Um, a, it's wet, you know, not that it's raining, but it's like you're breathing wet. <laughs> um, yeah. And the coastline is covered in um, low-density shrub that, you know, the shrubbery around here is thorny and difficult to get through and is about four feet tall, anywhere between four and eight feet tall in places. Um, and the, you know, as you're running to get through this foliage, um, you can see that in the distance there is um, easier foliage to get through and what I suppose could be considered a lightly forested area. Um, a lot of uh, ivy and creeper type vines. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm rock, uh, Raph is typing. How far can we get before we hear the explosions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raph says to let the dead shepherd the dead. <laughs> oh, oh, so we can get further away and go through the, e the less dense foliage. But we also would be a lot more visible, wouldn't we? Yeah. True. I think... survival. that wants to can make a survival roll. Go for it, survivors. Uh, 11. Oh. Yeah, two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we get to add anything. I suspect it won't matter. Yeah, you get to add survival and your intellect. Okay, so four. <laughs> I'm gonna go where Rexar tells me. So Rexar, um, you know, it's you, you're moving as far away from this uh, the wreckage as you can. Um, and Raquel points out uh, an area. <clears throat> or Raph points out an area. Um, and Rexar, you see that, you know, night is falling. Um, you find an area in this shrubbery that you could set up a camp for the night um, and take some time to bury the bodies. More so the camp. Part, right, right. Let's do it. Make it happen. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Rexar sets up a temporary shelter um, using the some of the emergency equipment from the survival kit, um, and you are under cover in the in this little hollowed out area under the shrubbery, and uh, you can 
just from the the distance you can see that this huge type r uh subsidized merchant fat trader lands and disgorges a ton of raiders heading towards your crash site but it seems that they don't know where you went and after a short time you can hear a loud explosion uh go off from the three grenades that you set up i really hope there are screams of agony campsite um, you and coming through the shrubbery you see these small birds um, they're that are called Marduk sparrows and they flit in and out and you can hear you know they they cause the shrubbery to rustle as they flit in and out and they are digging for worms and whatever else but raft you start to hear something is bigger out there and it sounds like it's circling your campsite make a recon check uh recon plus intellect smart <laughs> So, Raph, you see, uh, you catch a glimpse of something that looks wolf-like, like a cross between a wolf and a hyena. Let's send our canine friend out to go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Evan, look, Evan looks at you and goes, oh, ha, 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 I guess next you're going to tell me what a good boy I am. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think we will pause there with the creatures stalking your campsite and we will pick this up next week at 7 p.m on wednesday night have a good night guys i hope you're all having fun with this uh, it will the the adventure part will pick up uh, steam as we go. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Have a good night, guys.